Welcome back to Spray Bear Homestead. So today we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how to set up an Excel sheet to do the um, feed mix like we had been talking about. I had meant to have this video done a week ago and out, but this is homesteading and when the hay man calls you and says your hay is ready, you've got to go. So that's what we did last week, so I'm a little bit behind. This is one of a couple videos I'm going to try and get done this week. Um, so we'll kind of go from there. But anyway, getting to the spreadsheet. So I have this set up in Excel. You could do it in any spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you how to set this up in Excel. Now, other spreadsheet programs, I'm sure you can do just the same stuff with, but I don't use other spreadsheet programs, so I can tell you how. Um, we'll kind of walk through how to set up the formula. Um, I think the Microsoft spreadsheet pretty much does about the same thing. You might have to play with how the formula is written. Um, I couldn't tell you about Apple products, but this is how we do it in Excel. Um, please do not send me a message after this asking me to send you my spreadsheet because I'm not going to. Um, for legal reasons, I really can't do that. I can show you how to set up one for yourself and do that. It's all pretty much the same thing, but you're going to have to do the work for that. The other thing is please do not use the values that I show you for things like wheat, barley, oats, alfalfa, and all that. You really need to go get feed tags or Google whoever you're buying your feed pellets from and get their breakdown. It really does vary by location, and especially with the rabbit feed in particular. Your values are probably not going to be the same as my values for protein, fat, and fiber. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, I absolutely take no responsibility if you don't do the right things and you mess your rabbits up or kill them. You've really got to do the work here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about the spreadsheet. So the very first thing you're going to do um, is you're going to basically set it up like I've got here on the screen. So you're going to make some headers that are part of mix, percentage of mix, fat, fiber, and protein. Uh, you'll want to leave the first column alone because, of course, we're going to be putting in our um, additives here in a second. Kind of off to one side, and I have mine way over in column I. Uh, you'll want to put fat, fiber, and protein. What order you do this in doesn't really matter, but that's how I have mine set up. So once you get these all set up in place, then we'll go ahead and go to the second screen. All right, so now that we've got the basics of our spreadsheet set up, now we're going to go ahead and put our additives in. So, for instance, I'm using in, in this one where, where I was looking at it, this is Payback, which is a brand of the rabbit feed. This is what we've been feeding. Uh, this information comes right off the tag. 2% fat, 18% fiber, 16% protein. Um, I was also using some alfalfa pellets, orchard grass, calf manna, uh, boss is black oil sunflower seeds, barley, oats, haystack is another brand of rabbit feed that we were playing with, and special blend, which I mentioned in our additives video, kind of what that was. It's a local horse feed type thing um, that's made with uh, beet pulp, and I want to say it's Timothy hay, and uh, has some wheat germ oil and things in it. So something local. Now this is not everything you can use, of course. If you've got other stuff in your area that you want to play with, I've known people to use Purina goat chow in their rabbit feed. It's got corn in it, not something I use, but if that is something you want to use, this is where you're going to put it. So you're just going to put whatever it is, the fat, the fiber, and the protein. All right, so from there, what we're going to go to is we're going to go into the column that says part of mix. So pretty much for everything, you can just put a zero for right now. Um, I always start mine because it'll start giving you funky errors and saying, you know, no input. I start mine with whatever rabbit feed I'm going to be using. I go ahead and put it in as 50 because that's the size of my bag. If you've got a 40-pound bag, put in 40. With the part of mix, you're looking at poundage. Do not try and mix feed going off the scoop method because everything weighs something different. Uh, sunflower seeds weigh a lot less than oats, weigh a lot less than alfalfa pellets that can be pretty dense. So remember, if you're going to be mixing your own feed, you need to have a scale 
and actually be weighing your ingredients as you go along. Um, there is no other accurate way to do it. The scoop method does not work. So when we do our parts of the mix, what we're talking about is overall poundage. So um, as a starting point, I always just put in the size of, of whatever the rabbit feed bag is. Okay, so you're going to put zeros in for everything else. And at the bottom, you're going to make sure that you have hit the sum button and summed all that up. So you want this to be a reflection of these numbers. And then I usually turn it bold so that I know that I've done it and it's all what it should be. So after that, now we're going to get into actually programming the sheet and writing functions. So what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out what your percentage of the mix is. And I know some people are already thinking, oh God, not functions. It's not as hard as it sounds. Okay, so how you set this up, um, like right now, the only thing we have mentioned in our spreadsheet is just the payback, right? So the percentage of the mix for the payback should be 100%. So how you figure that out, your C column should equal B2 divided by B11. And I'll and you'll adjust that as you go. So what that means is this column um, should be a division this by this. So if we've got 50 pounds of mix total, um, and 50, 50 pounds of it is the payback, we should equal 100% of it here. So that means that when we get to the alfalfa, it's going to be this, so B3, divided by this, is going to give us our percentage. So if we've got, um, say we go ahead and do 50 pounds, we would never do that, but if you added 50 pounds of alfalfa pellets, see how it's now changed the numbers, so now we're looking at 50% of our mix is payback, 50% of our mix is alfalfa, because the amount of the mix has actually changed to 100 pounds. So you're going to adjust that as you go. So with Excel, usually once you've got your program in here, you can usually copy and paste your function down all the way. Just make sure that it's copied it correctly. So each one of these should be looking at the box in front of it. So C5 should be C, uh, B5 divided by B11. B11 is going to be your constant in this. Or whatever number you're at, if you're only looking at dividing, you know, at mixing four or five things, your total may be up here. So it's going to be whatever your total is. Um, in mine, it's B11. If I only had six things here, um, then I might be looking at B7, B5, whatever it is. So just remember that this is going to be divided by whatever this is to figure that box out accordingly. If you're not good at functions, just remember that... Uh, there is some kind of help up here with the functions. You don't need sum or anything funky with Excel with what we're doing. So it's just going to be, you know, equals B2 divided by B11 and on from there. Okay, so once you have your spreadsheet figured out to do your percentage of your mix, now we're going to go on to the last bit of it. And that is, remember these funky ones over here, we had fat, fiber, and protein. So now we're going to go ahead and incorporate this. So this is where the functionality gets kind of long. So what you're doing here is you're taking the sum of this for fat times this. Okay? Plus the sum of this times this and this times this and on all the way down. So what you'll do is you'll get a really funky... Let me kind of pan that up just a touch on the thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a really funky equation right there. Okay? So you are equaling your sum of C2 times D2 plus sum of C3 times D3 plus the sum of C4 times D4 plus the sum of C5 times D5 and onward. So for instance, right now, going back to our our thing of the payback, the fat is 2%, so it should carry over there. If we play with the number and just check, say we added 8 pounds of oats, it should auto-calculate over here that now adding 8 pounds of oats to our 50% in payback, we've now got a fat of 2.28. 
So you're going to do the exact same thing for your fiber. Again, you're taking your percentage of your mix times your fiber number for each one. So sum of C2 times E2 plus the sum of C3 times E3 plus the sum of C4 to E4 and, and onwards until you get done. And that's going to give you your fiber. Protein, same thing. So now we're going to take the C times the F column. So once that's all set up, you'll know that you've got it right because when you move a number, your, your values should change. So the other thing that you'll notice on this page is that I've also got two little asterisks next to alfalfa and calf mana. These I like to put on there just to remind myself that, hey, these things are higher in calcium and I really don't want to use very much of them. Um, so I want to keep that pretty small. But the gist of it now is you've got to kind of make some decisions based on what you're shooting for as to how you're going to adjust this stuff, right? So in most cases, we are looking at a three to three and a half. Uh, I like to shoot for about a 20% fiber, as high as 22, and protein anywhere from 15, 16, even up to 17, depending on what breed you're using. So these are kind of my target values, and how you do this is going to be kind of dependent on what items are available to you and what you're comfortable with adding. Uh, you, like uh, right now on this spreadsheet, I don't have wheat. We've used wheat in the past. If you want to use wheat, you'll have to make sure you've got a line item. But like for my feed right now, um, the base feed payback is a little bit low in fiber and a little bit low in fat. So what you do is when you start doing this, you go, okay, well, I'm going to work on my fiber. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at what I've got for options to bring my fiber up. So we know that we don't want to use a whole lot of this, uh, the calf mana, because it's high in calcium. Black oil sunflower seeds, yeah, we could, we could add some of that, but we also need to be very cautious because the fat is very high and we don't need to go up that much. Then we can look at things like the alfalfa pellets. Um, for me, it was a special blend pellet. This is what I like to, to mess with the most. And I go up by five pound increments until I get something I'm happy with. So for me, let's go for about a 10. All right, so I'm getting there, right? So at 10% of my, or 10 pounds of special blend, so my overall mix is 60 pounds. Now I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, well, my fiber is 19.67. Uh, my protein, 15.33. That's not bad. And my fat is still a little lower than I'd like it to be, but not terrible for a breeding herd. So we can go up another five pounds. All right, so look at that. We are pretty much where I need it to be. Give or take, the fat's still a little bit all low, the fiber's looking good, the protein is looking good. But say I've decided I really want to try and add some boss in there, maybe a pound or two, to try and get my fats up a little bit, to give myself some better sheen. Uh, now my, my fat's coming up to about three and a quarter, my fiber's still looking good, and my protein's still looking good. So do I need to add the rest of this stuff? It kind of depends. If you want to add a bunch of stuff, you certainly can. You can play with these numbers all day long. What I tell everybody is the same thing. Your feed pellets, rabbit feed, should always make up 50% of your mix or better. Uh, you can go down from that, but certainly about half of it. You can go oats as high as 30% of your mix. So if we're doing 50 pounds, uh, say I could go up. Pretty, pretty close to 20 pounds of oats would be okay if I'm adding other stuff. Um, you'll see that in most cases, the oats are going to bring your fiber down quite a bit. So you just got to kind of play with it and see what you want. But make sure you're using at least half of it as rabbit feed. Uh, just to try and keep your vitamins and, and minerals where they should be. Alright, so if you've got questions about what you should or should not even consider mixing in, you can go back to our mixing feed video, the last one. I'm sure Kanan will drop a link in here that kind of talks about what is okay and what's not okay. 
uh, I try to avoid anything with molasses and whatnot, but we cover all that in the other one. Um, grass pellets of pretty much any kind, because I know you can get Tef hay pellets, you can get um, Timothy pellets, <clears throat> you can get all kinds of stuff. Just plug them in and try them and see what it'll do. Um, we'll probably do another video going forward talking about how to read your feed tags, but if you've ever bought feed, the tag that's on it, some of the first three things that they're going to talk about is, you know, fat, fiber, and protein. Usually there's a minimum or a maximum. If there's a minimum and a maximum, I'll pick something in between because it's probably going to hit about average. Um, but you may play with it in a couple of ways and work the scenario out on on both ends and to see if you can live with the minimums and if you can live with the maximums. The other thing is if you are using a different program and this does not work for you and you're not sure how to do it, you might want to Google how to do a weighted average using whatever kind of spreadsheet you're using. Um, Cause that's basically what this is, is a weighted average. So we're figuring out uh, the weights of this, um, of the overall parts Weighted average, if you Google it, will kind of walk you through how to determine all of this. But I hope that kind of gives you guys the basics of how I did it. Um, I know it can be kind of confusing, especially if you're not really comfortable with Excel. But again, uh, just play with it. You'll get it. You can do this longhand. For those of you who do not have spreadsheets, you can actually do this longhand and figure it out yourself. Uh, it's not as easy to make adjustments if you're doing it longhand, but it certainly can be done. I, I know people who break out the notepad and actually can do it. I'm not that patient. I want to turn on my computer and plug it in. I, I did the hard work of setting it up, so it should all be there. All right, guys, that is it this time from Springer or Homestead. If you have questions, and I'm sure you probably will, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. Again, please do not ask me to send you my spreadsheet. I can't for legal reasons. I've had so many people try to advise me and say, well, just put a disclaimer out. And the truth of the matter is in the U.S. court system, a disclaimer means nothing. So, no, I'm not going to send you my spreadsheet. You're going to have to do the work on it. Um, I won't send you exactly what I'm doing with my feed because I feel like it's irresponsible, irresponsible of me to do that because I don't know exactly the nutritional values of the stuff that's available in your area. And rabbit feed in particular has a huge variance. Um, any of these ingredients can vary greatly by the location that they're grown in. So I can't send you my recipe. You're going to have to do the work for yourself. And remember, if you start mixing feed, this is a six to eight week at least before you really start to see a difference in your rabbits. Um, they adapt pretty quickly, but if you've been feeding something else for a long time, they basically have to reprogram how their body functions. And so it is kind of a long game. This isn't something you're going to see dramatic overnight results on usually, unless they're really, really thin um, or having some kind of fiber issues or something like that. Uh, usually it's going to take you a while to actually see a difference. But like I said, just leave a comment down in the bottom. If you've got questions, let us know. You can always hit me up on email. Uh, I'm sure kanan has got it buried here and there where you can actually get in touch with me. Um, but that's it from Springer Homestead and our spreadsheet on how to mix feed. Now, once you've got the basics of this, remember you can use it for other stuff. It's all about figuring out how to set up your spreadsheet. We'll see you next time. Happy homesteading.